Until the law changed in 2009, most Tennessee distilled spirits had the name Jack or George on the label. Anything else was pretty much considered illegal moonshine. Well, today the Short Mountain Distillery makes legal moonshine. And as Gretchen Bates discovered, makes for a pretty interesting day trip where you won't be hassled by revenuers. Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed, a poor mountaineer. You're probably familiar with Jed's story, which is the opposite of our story. While the Clampets found bubbling crude and went to California, Billy Kaufman left Beverly for the hills of Tennessee. And while what he found bubbled all right, it wasn't black gold. It was white lightning. But Billy's journey, which led to the creation of Short Mountain Distillery, originally had nothing to do with drinking corn, but growing it, as our tour guide explains. My name is Jeff, hello, welcome. Welcome to Little Short Mountain Farm, ladies and gentlemen. When he got this place, it was all about, I just want to get away, which he's actually from Beverly Hills, California, can you believe that? <laughs> and wanted to settle down. If I can, I'd like to try to establish an organic farm if he could. So he got this place and that was the aspiration. It took a few years, but I re realized after a while that people weren't really making their money small farming. And what they were really doing was making money moonshining. They've been doing it here so long, everyone is related to a moonshiner, whether they like it or not. Tell, tell them how you blew yourself up. <laughs> Are you famine already? Meet Ronald Lawson and Ricky Estes, Billy's co uh, uh, business associates, two Cannon County natives with a vast knowledge of what Granny called tonic. If you want to hear stories about moonshiners trying to out run the law or anything like that, you should talk to Ricky and Ronald. Ricky has been caught, you know, a bunch of times probably. I love to make moonshine. I born in the whole, my whole family with moonshine. And Ronald has never been caught. They wouldn't have I outsmarted them, it was just pure luck. Their personalities are very different, even though for decades they've been making the same exact recipe. Who makes better shine? I think I do, Ricky thinks he does. So I, <laughs> I read the way it is, you know, you try to do the best with it. Ronald was the first person to introduce me to Tennessee moonshine. Good moonshine to have that good mellow corn yep. taste, and you feel that warm feeling coming right. back up. If, if you're drinking moonshine and quick as you drink it, it just burns you up, it's not good shine. It was just so foreign to me. And when I tried it, I really loved it. it. It became my favorite spirit. For many years, making that spirit might have resulted in a change of address. Hey, what about my phone call? Luckily for Billy and friends, that changed a few years back. The Tennessee legislature deregulated hard liquor. Well, what do you think Billy thought when he heard that? <laughs> Yeehaw, he was ready to do it then. Ready willing, but unable to finance it on his own. So Billy followed the example of other moonshiners and made it a family tradition. When we knew that it was a possibility to have a distillery in Cannon County, I called my brothers and they uh, both decided to help me finance the distillery. And my brothers and I thought it was a good idea to put our family value, the golden rule, on every bottle that we produce. So if you look at one of our bottles, you can um, see a coin on it. On the back are the three stars of Tennessee and the golden rule. And now we're making things that we made before prohibition, like Tennessee whiskey and rye whiskey and bourbon, and all that's starting to come out now because we've just matured as a real distillery. There's no bells and whistles. It's just really good corn, organic corn if we can do it really good rye, really good malts, and we grind them fresh all here. Pure spring water. Pure water that owes its quality to the distillery's namesake. Short Mountain is one of the last little outcrops of the Appalachians, and it's filled with limestone and 
little crevices and caves. And when it rains on Short Mountain, it gets filtered down through that limestone. And all around Short Mountain, there are these springs. And one of them actually used to be the spring where Cooper Melton made uh, moonshine for Al Capone. And we used that spring to supply all of our water here at the distillery. After you've toured the distillery, it's just a short walk to the Stillhouse Cafe where you can grab a bite to eat and sample the spirits. We don't just want to be like a regular distillery tour. We try and give people a lot of hands-on um, experiences. And one of the things that we do is we have a cocktail class. And this cocktail class is all about having a good time and learning how to make classic cocktails with our spirits. This place is not very far away from Nashville, Knoxville, Chattanooga, but it's a different world. That's what it's all about. It's really about getting out of the hustle and the bustle and coming somewhere where there's not gonna be big crowds, where you're gonna be able to walk through the woods and hear the birds and sit outside and watch the cows graze. We just encourage people to come out here and experience the place and enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm.